next reader is Maria Ceferati, who is a music teacher and the music director of Acting Without Boundaries, a theater group for performers with physical disabilities. She is an MFA candidate at Rosemont College, and her work has been published in the Artistic Rebuttal Project, Just Jazz Guitar Magazine, Apiary Magazine, and Philadelphia Stories. Welcome, Maria. The story is called Next Door. Anthony walked home from the remodeling job, recalling what he had heard from the young owners. They had inspected the work the team had done and requested a meeting with his father, Sal. So Sal dis dismissed the crew early. In his mind, Anthony kept repeating the word he heard the husband and wife say, sustainable. He smoked a cigarette, stepping over the usual maze of stuff on the sidewalk, the dashed dream of a crumpled lottery ticket and the shell of a cellophane from a pack of cigarettes. And he didn't hear the languid tapping of a soda bottle rolling against the curb. He was muttering the word out loud now, maybe talking to the houses around him. The home seemed to be sweating along with everyone else in the city that mid-July. The facade squinted in the sun, dripping small puddles of perspiration from growling air conditioners. Anthony arrived outside his house and sucked a last long drag of his cigarette. He walked up the steps to the porch a wrought iron railing separated his family's house from the next door neighbors. A for sale sign stood proudly on the railing. A few months ago, a magnetized banner had been slapped across it, reading SOLD in capital letters like it was yelling at him. He crushed the cigarette into the sign and flicked it toward the base of the tree in the front of his curb. When he walked into the house, he smelled his mother's garlicky chicken cutlets. His sister Rose was sitting in the dining room table with index cards piled on either side of her. Her dark hair was situated in its usual messy ponytail and she wore an old navy t-shirt and jean shorts. Anthony flicked his chin toward her. So, she didn't look up. Hi. The roadhouse was not as narrow as it appeared from outside. The ceilings were 11 feet high and living room, dining room, and kitchen opened one after the other without walls in between. Sunlight came in through the front bay window and reflected off the gold foil wallpaper, washing the whole first floor in a sepia glow. Anthony's mother stood at the stove, flipping the breaded cutlets over one at a time in a cast iron pan, wearing her flyer's t-shirt and black capri pants. He kissed his mother's cheek. I thought you were supposed to work late today, she said. The cutlets sizzled with each flip. Where's your father? The owners are having a meeting with him about the job. For what? Get this, Anthony said. They want to know if we can do the rest of it with sustainable materials. He wiped the sweat from his forehead with the bottom of the tank top he wore. Sustainable? What's sustainable? I don't even know, Anthony said. Some BS they're bringing from New York or New Jersey or wherever the hell these people are from. He saw something on the floor from the corner of his eye and stomped on the ground suddenly. What the hell are you doing, Josephine said. Anthony twisted the toe of his boot into the floor. Another friggin' roach, he said. I skeeved those things so bad. He got a paper towel from the roll on the counter and cleaned up the dead insect. These roaches are coming from all that work being done next door. He washed his hands at the sink. While the work is done, Josephine said, moving the cooked cutlets to a plate. The new neighbors are moving in today. Rita down the street told me. Can you keep it down, please? Rose said from the dining room. Josephine gestured for Anthony to lower his voice. You know she's studying for the big college test. Mm. So that's my problem? Rose look up, looked up from her cards and huffed. Why are you being so contumelious right now? <laughs> Anthony imitated her voice. Why are you not speaking English right now? <laughs> All right, Josephine said. Some of these cutlets are done. You might as well sit down and eat. Your father can eat when he gets home later. She wiped down the kitchen table and Rose and Anthony sat down. How come you're not studying upstairs, Ro? He said. Because it's hotter than a sweatshop up there, she said. And my room is an agglomeration of books and papers and other paraphernalia. <laughs> Anthony forked a cutlet and put it in his plate. For a month, you got your head buried in books, you don't say two words to nobody, and now you're talking, and I don't understand a friggin' word you're saying. I told you it was for the test, Josephine said. 
My teacher said that once I've absorbed the vocabulary for the SAT, I need to incorporate it into the praxis of conversation. It's not fatuous in any way. It actually serves a purpose. She scooped the shimmering fried potato slices onto her plate. Anthony looked at her like a perplexed cockatoo. When you go back to speaking English, let me know. I realize that my verbiage stuns and frightens you, but if you weren't so obtuse, you'd understand. She smiled at him. Anthony gave her the finger. That's enough, both of you, Josephine said. You know what I had to do on the job today? Anthony said with a mouthful of food. I had to install a Juliet balcony in the back of a house. A Juliet balcony! What the freak is somebody going to do with a Juliet balcony? Open their doors, walk outside, and look at their neighbors' backyards? Here we go, here we go, watch this. Anthony stuck out his chest, throwing open an imaginary set of French doors. He continued in a high-pitched voice. I wonder what my neighbors are doing today. He peered down from the pretend balcony. Over on my left is that crazy neighbor, Emilio, sitting in the beach chair and drinking from that same jug of wine again. And over on my right is Mary picking her basils and tomato from her little raised garden. Ain't that cute? And Anthony crinkled up his nose. And what's in front of me? It's Carmella hanging her bras and granny panties on the clothesline. Hey, Carmella, Anthony waved. Those powder blue nylon ones are so cute. He inhaled. Mmm, and just smell all that garbage and cat piss coming up from the alley. There's nothing like it. He batted his eyelashes, and then his voice came down a few octaves. Give me a break. Maybe they got the balcony because they're looking for their Romeo, Rose said. Romeo? Ain't no Romeo around here. The only Romeo I know is Bigfoot Romeo, who runs the numbers around the corner. How you like that? Shakespeare. It's Shakespeare, you douchebag. You're the douchebag. Will you two shut up? Josephine said. A loud banging sound from heavy furniture came through the wall. I still can't believe they gutted poor Mrs. Polizzi's house and redid it all, Anthony said. Rose said, probably looks better than it did when that old woman lived there, God rest her soul and it increased the value of this house. What do you care about that? I don't know about you, but I'm not going anywhere. I want to raise my kids here, just like I was raised, with family around, kids playing in the street, everybody looking out for each other. Why don't you start by getting a nice girlfriend, Josephine said. I'm 22 years old. Ma, please, Anthony said. You can't recreate your childhood, Rose said, wiping her mouth. The past is the past. What do you think you are, Jay Gatsby? <laughs> Gatsby, he said, recognizing the name. Wait a minute. Isn't that the plumber on 12th Street? <laughs> Rose sighed and rolled her eyes. Your sister's right, Josephine said. I've lived in this house for 50 years. I loved my childhood, and I loved watching you kids grow here, but it's changed. Well, why do these new people have to come here, though? Anthony lit a cigarette and walked to the coffee maker on the counter to prepare a pot of coffee. If I see one more guy with a pair of dark grim glasses holding up a cup of coffee and looking down at his iPhone, I'm going to punch him so hard I'll be on the news. <laughs> it's called gentrification, Rose said. Let me put it in your terms. The neighborhood starts to go to pot, the old timers stay as long as they can, new people come and they get the property cheap and the whole neighborhood changes. Another roach jutted out across the floor. Anthony tried to step on it, but this time it ran through a crack in the wall. The coffee maker gurgled, and the smell of 8 o'clock coffee began to fill the room. You know what I'm going to do, he said. I'm going to go over there now, and I'm going to tell them about all these roaches that have been here for months from the construction. He sucked hard on a cigarette and then crushed it in an ashtray. Anthony walked outside and saw the moving truck double parked in the street. His new neighbor's front door and the screen door were propped open. The screen was propped open with a large bowling trophy. Anthony walked in and saw a man and a woman in their early 20s talking in the kitchen. Great, Anthony thought. Here they are, just like I pictured. The guy wore dark rimmed glasses and skinny jeans, and the girl wore khaki shorts and an oversized Villanova t-shirt. She placed a rolled blue yoga mat at the bottom of the stairs. Anthony cleared his throat loudly. Oh, the guy said to Anthony as they walked closer. Do you have a question about where to put something? <laughs> Me, Anthony said. I ain't one of the movers. I'm your next door neighbor. My name's Anthony. 
Well, Anthony, the guy said, gesturing toward the girl, this is your next door neighbor, Jules. I'm just Drew, the friend whom she used to help her move. He bowed and smiled at you, Jules playfully, and she smacked him on the shoulder. Yeah, and you were such a big help with all of those muscles, she said, squeezing his tiny upper arms. I could probably take you out if I had to. She's right, Anthony thought, sizing her up. Couldn't see much of her body because of her large t-shirt, but her legs looked toned and strong. Like he said, I'm Jules. She extended her hand, smiling. Her fair skin looked flushed. Anthony, he said, shaking her hand and stepping into the room. I'm on this side. He gestured to the left. Back to the left, sorry. <laughs> and I'm on my way out, Drew said, looking at his watch. They kissed each other on the cheek, and Drew tiptoed sideways past Anthony who was standing, staring at Jules from the threshold. Can I give you a hand with anything? Anthony said. No, I think the movers have it under control, she said. OK, he said, looking around. You uh, got a brother? Yeah, actually, I do. She paused, looking at him. How did you know that? He tilted his chin toward a box on the floor that was marked Eagles slash Phillies. It looks like a sports fan. She shook her head, smiling. No, no, no. My brother still lives at home with my parents in Berwyn. That box is mine. I'm kind of sports geek. You don't look like no geek to me. <laughs> well, let's put it this way. In that box are all the tickets and programs of every game I've ever <coughs> attended, as well as bobbleheads, mugs, autographed pictures, anything you could think of that has to do with Philly sports. I'm going to make my second bedroom into kind of sports slash computer room. That's cool. Thanks, she folded her arms. I even had a moment of silence when Harry Callis died. It broke my heart. I know what you're saying. That was a tough moment. My buddies and I raised the glass that day, too. He watched her tuck a wisp of red, wavy hair behind her ears. You're in construction, she said. How'd you know that? You're wearing boots in July. He looked down at his boots. Oh, you want me to stand outside? Looks like you had all the floors redone in here. I don't want to mess it up. Don't worry about it. I'll have to clean everything once I'm moved in every way. Anyway, Mrs. Polizzi had maroon carpets in here, Anthony said. I know. I was so happy when I had the carpets taken up and found this amazing hardwood underneath. I would have never guessed there was all that inlay around the border. You don't see that kind of work no more. The house is so great, she looked up. I love the high ceilings, and it really has a lot of character. And I love the shade from the tree out front. Do you know what kind of tree that is? He thought about it and shrugged. I don't know, a city tree, I guess? <laughs> oh, she said. There's one thing that I wanted to add to the house that I just couldn't afford, though. I ran out of money. Yeah, what's that? A little balcony off the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled his eyes. She smiled. What? Is that silly? I think they're really cute. You put a balcony up there, and your view's not going to look like Berwyn. Trust me. I know that, she said. Why do you think I got out of Berlin? I think I've spoken to you longer than I've spoken to some of my neighbors there. You're shitting me, Anthony said. I am so not shitting you, she said. I'm serious. There's life here. There's people. Huh. There's definitely people. She smiled, and he shuffled, looking down at the tips of his boots. Coming through, one of the movers said from behind him. Anthony got out of the way. Well, I'll let you go, he said. You've got a lot of stuff to do. Yeah, it's going to take me a while to get my act together. It was nice meeting you, Jules, Anthony said, shaking her hand. You too, Anthony, she smiled. Anthony walked back to his house. He saw his father, Sal, eating in the kitchen, and Rose was back at her index cards. Where you been, his father said. We thought you got lost or something. I was next door. Well, Rose said, what are the new neighbors like? Did you share your delightful axioms with them? <laughs> it's just one person over there, Anthony said. Josephine was pouring a cup of coffee. Well, did you give him hell about the roaches? It's not a him. She stopped pouring and looked up at Anthony. Well, did you tell her about the roaches? Wait a minute, Sal said, pointing at Anthony. Look at his face. <laughs> Josephine looked at, his son, at her son. What's the matter with his face? What's the girl look like, his father said. Is she good looking? Anthony tried to hide a smile. I mean, she's hot, yeah, but she ain't like the skanks around here, you know? She's cute. She's got red hair. Listen, Anthony, his father said, pointing at 
pointing a fork at him. Watch out for those redheads. Mm. I dated a redhead a long time ago. What do you know about redheads? Josephine said, folding her arms. <laughs> Sal looked at her and back at Anthony. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Here we go, Rose said. She's a hottie, and now Anthony's all nice to her. Could this be an incipient romance? <laughs> no, it ain't that. I mean, she's different. He started to blush. Anthony walked into the kitchen, and Josephine gently patted him on the cheek. Maybe you'll find a nice girlfriend after all. Rose rolled her eyes and returned to her cards. Anthony poured himself a cup of coffee. Another roach crept out into the floor, and he quickly crushed it. But this time, he smiled. Hmm.